Welcome to Vintage Variety. It's Friday. I'm off work today, so let's go thrifting. I'm heading into Athens, Georgia. That's one of the places that I like to go to. They have some pretty good thrift stores. Let's see what we can find. So I'm a little bit disappointed. This is an American family thrift store in Athens, and they no longer have jewelry. Since I'm already here, I'm going to look around anyway. I always like to look at the purses. I've found some pretty nice vintage purses and also some name brand purses at the store. I also like looking around at the glassware. They're a little sparse today, but believe it or not, I've already spotted a couple of really beautiful pieces. I also like to look at the belts. I have found some designer belts and some really cool vintage belts at this thrift store. I've done content on those and I will link it below in case you're interested. Found a couple of really nice items here. Now I'm gonna head to another thrift store here in Athens, Georgia. I won't be able to record it because my phone's starting to die, but I will show you what I got at the end. I'm going to start out showing you some non-jewelry items that I was able to find at one of my favorite thrift stores. I was very disappointed that this thrift store no longer sells jewelry. My guess is like many thrift stores, they've decided to start selling online. So far, I haven't seen anything online about them doing something similar to Goodwill like the blue boxes. But these are some really cute things that I found. Look at this bag. And all of this is mother of pearl. And it has a wooden handle. Also collect vintage and antique purses. And I really liked this. This up for $2.99 to add to my collection of purses. Some of my purses I do use. I don't use them while I'm working, but I'll often use them when I'm off work or on vacation. I don't use the really old antique ones. I keep those stored away, but this is a purse that I will most likely use. And then I found these. These are hand painted. There's two of them. You can see I paid $3.99 a piece. These are Napco. And there's the signature on the back, Napco China. So I thought I would share a little bit of info about Napco. Napco, also known as National Pottery Corporation, was started in 1938 in Bedford, Ohio. They began by making oral containers, and then later, sometime after World War II, they began importing a lot of glassware, china, stuff like that from Japan. These pieces like this are collectible and very popular with collectors, because of their quality. The quality of them is pretty consistent. If I had to guess, I would say that these are somewhere from the late 1950s on into the 1960s. And I say that because it was sometime around 1956 that Napco started importing pieces like this from Japan. A lot of the pieces will have a paper or sticker label, and some of them will have a transfer mark like this one. These are definitely vintage, and I'm surprised that they're in such good condition. There's no chips. There's no cracks. Just to give you guys an idea of the value, I did look up some similar pieces, and I saw pieces like this priced on websites like eBay, where from $12 on up to $16 or $17. So not bad for a $4 dish. Napco made a lot of the lady head vases. I've done content on that in the past. So I picked these up because I thought they were absolutely beautiful. They will fit in well with my collection of milk glass, but something like this is also pretty to put like potpourri in or to even use as a jewelry tray. Now I'm going to show you the jewelry that I did manage to find. I went to another kind of little hole in the wall type thrift store and I got very lucky they had a good selection which was a surprise because this thrift store usually has plenty of jewelry but it's more like Mardi Gras beads and things like that. I'm going to pour all this out and show you guys what I got. I'm going to start I think with the earrings. These are Chico's. A lot of people like Chico's jewelry, and I am one of those people, but I mainly look for pieces of Chico jewelry for my mama. She loves anything from Chico's. She loves their clothing, 
and she loves their jewelry. So anytime I can run across pieces of jewelry that are from Chico's, I usually pick them up for her. I think these are really pretty, guys. I also found these, and I just love the look of these. Now, these are not clip-ons, not signed, but these are cute, aren't they? I will definitely wear these. Then I saw these door knocker earrings and that's what caught my eye about them. I liked the look of them. You can see they're kind of like a matte gold tone. And these guys are signed. I'll turn them over so you can see the signature. These are Ann Klein. There's the mark on those. Very well made. I really like these and this is another pair that I will probably wear quite often. This pair caught my eye because I thought these were Monet or they could be Naper. I did look at the backs and I don't see a signature. I'm going to take these off just to be sure. These could be later pieces from either of those collections. I will have to get my books out and look through them and see if there's something like this in the book. A lot of the later pieces weren't stamped. They only came with the name on the card or the tags. And then I found these. These really caught my eye. They were very interesting looking. Zoom in so you guys can see the detail on those. I don't see any markings. This looks like something someone has made. You can see that the little posts have been glued on there. But still, I thought these looked really neat. And they looked like something I would wear. I managed to find one bracelet. This is Lucite. And I thought this was rather pretty. Now let's get into the necklaces that I found today was the first necklace that I picked up at this thrift store. I really liked the look of it. I love the little floral beads, of course. There's the clasp on it. It's not marked. I will put it on the form and let you guys see how it looks. I think that is a very pretty necklace. Very nice detail on some of the beads. This one has a little bit of cracking from age. These are plastic beads, by the way. I also found this one, and my first guess was Japan. However, I do not see any kind of markings on the clasp. I think these may be glass beads much heavier than plastic would be. I think this will fit in well with some pieces that I already own. I chose this one. It was hanging right beside the other one. In the lighting in the thrift store, I couldn't really tell it, but this it does have some cracking on the larger beads. You can see that. It looks to be from the inside, so it may be the way that this necklace is meant to look. It looks like cracks would be on the outside, but when you feel it, it's smooth. So maybe they're supposed to look that way. This necklace caught my eye because of the coloring of it. It almost looks like amber, but it's not. You can see the little bubbles in there, so you know it's some type of plastic. But I thought this was really pretty. I would call this faux amber. What do you guys think? And I like how they've done the little links to match this part. This necklace, when I saw it, the first thing that popped in my head was Monet. And then I looked at it for a few seconds and I thought, it's either a Monet or a Naper. I was right. This is a Naper. There's the mark on it. I don't know if it's pronounced Naper or Napper or Napier. I believe from just listening to other people on YouTube that Naper is the way to say it. I had been saying it wrong forever, but I'm good with that. I will add this to my collection of Naper jewelry. I'm going to put it on the form so you guys can see what it looks like. It is a long necklace, so I've doubled it up. But 
And this is the last piece that I picked up at that same thrift store. I like the looks of this. However, you can see that it has some of the little rhinestones missing. So this will be a little repair project that I'll have to do. And I didn't think this was marked, but it looks like it has something there. Let's see if we can zoom in. It is marked. The marking says MB. Looking closely at this mark, it could very well be a Marcel Boucher. He was a French jewelry designer. He started out in the 1920s. This is a mark that I have seen on Boucher pieces. The only confusion that I'm having here is, first of all, most of the pieces that are marked like this will have some type of a serial number, and I'm not seeing that on here. A lot of his pieces were done in sterling, or I'm assuming silver plated, could be wrong there. So this is a piece that I'm gonna have to do a lot more research on. However, it is quite vintage, it's in fairly good condition, does need some repairs. Some of the stones don't look too hot. They look like maybe they're dead stones, but I did want to share that with you guys about the mark. That concludes my content for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to share these items with me. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications on more content about collecting vintage and antique items. Thank you again for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.